Hello everyone, thanks for joining me for another cigar tasting. Today I'm going to be tasting a product from the H. Upman Company. They are another one of my all-time favorite cigar manufacturers, right up there with Alec Bradley and CAO and and uh, yeah, E.P. Carrillo. Um, they've been around for a long time making really, really good cigars. This one in particular is really one of their better ones. This is the Herman's Batch. <coughs> So this is named after Herman Upman, who was a, a German financier who moved to Cuba many, many years ago to e expand his clientele. And so this is the way that he liked his cigars back in the day. It has a little foot band here that has Herman's actual signature on there, you know, a, a copy of it, obviously a print of it. So I'm going to have to remove that foot band in order to light this thing. Um, so this particular, uh, as you know, the, the Upman cigars are made in the Dominican Republic. This particular one is, um, uh, I don't remember exactly what they call the, um, the Vitola on it, but it is a five and a half by 46. The tobacco is, uh, the, the binder is Dominican. The fillers are both Dominican and Nicaraguan. And this beautiful glistening and, and velvety wrapper is a um, uh, Ecuadorian Habano. So it is a, a um, Cuban seed uh, leaf grown in, in Ecuador and made into a beautiful brown Colorado wrapper. And the caps, let's see, it's got, looks like two caps. And they they twist off on the end as you can see so this ought to be a real good stable cigar very easy to to cut to get a light which is what i'm going to do beautiful beautiful all right and let's give this thing a smell it's one of the most beautiful noses I've ever gotten off of a, an unlit cigar. It's got the earthiness that you would expect from anything that's dark as a Colorado or darker, but it's more than just earthy. It's it's herbaceous as well. It's got a lot of a lot of aromas of the the floor of, of the rainforest in, in Central America. All of that that greenery that falls and it's nearly always in shade so it stays moist and it just rots and becomes this beautiful black compost but, but there's so many plants in there that you just won't see in other parts of the world and it's just encapsulates the aroma of all those beautiful things and some chocolate like cocoa nibs and just as when you go to the grocery store sometimes and you buy an apple, I say a red apple or a yellow apple, and it may have splotches of green on there. This is not just cocoa nibs. Some of the cocoa nibs are still green, and you can smell that in, in the wrapper. Yeah, it smells a little earthier and a little smokier in the open foot. Not so much on the, on the fresh cut head, though. So that smells more like the wrapper. Beautiful. So let's get this thing lit up. So, right out of the starting gate, let me just say that this thing is very velvety, very oily. Uh, so this is going to be a very much appreciated cigar, I can tell you that right now. Um, structurally, this is extremely well rolled, extremely. Um, if it weren't for crisscrossing veins, I wouldn't even be able to tell you where the seams are in the wrapper. It's, it's that good. Um, I expect this uh, ash to hold on very well, we shall see. Um, nice uh, smooth leaves, not a lot of real coarse veins in them. So the the earthiness isn't as rich on the palate as I would have expected it, um, but that could grow as it as it concentrates as the cigar burns down. Um, the chocolate really comes out very prominently, uh, and it does have that herbaceousness as you you often run into when you first light up a cigar. Sometimes it's very peppery. Uh, in this case, I'm not getting peppercorns. I'm basically getting jalapenos. I'm getting a very green uh, capsicum that's that's hot, very spicy. It's already starting to mellow. 
and most of the flavor I'm getting off it other than the chocolate is woodiness but it's not uh, like a smoky woodiness it's all like freshly milled woods I'm getting like freshly routered uh, oak uh, maple ash beautiful it's got a real nice woodiness to it nothing nutty at this point um, my recollection of having these in the past is that there were some nice baking spices those have not come out yet but we'll see as it burns down okay so I'm far enough into this now that I can give you some ideas on flavors so as I mentioned there is a lot of machined wood so again oak um, ash maple um, even kind of getting a hint of cherry wood now but again it's all machine really nothing burned which is kind of nice um, the ash is looking beautiful so far um, one thing that's really nice about this particular Vitola is that it's only a, a ring gauge 46 and I, I kind of I don't mind how long a cigar is it could be short it could be long um, but I'm, I'm really a fan of a narrower ring gauge not really sure why that is um, um, I, I guess I, I like the flavors better like I've had certain cigars in a, a narrower ring gauge and a, and a fatter ring gauge and found the the narrow one to be a little more flavorful and also I like a little bit of restriction in the airflow and the little bit narrower cigar usually provides that and this one in particular this one's got a really nice tight airflow which I really enjoy um, so as I mentioned uh, on the, the both on the palate and on the nose I'm getting these machined woods and I'm also getting them on the retro hail retro hail is is a, a little caustic um, but uh, it's certainly not over the top it's certainly uh, doable um, I th expect that to mellow out a little bit too if I remember the cigar uh, from past smokes um, it, it does mellow out over time maybe about an inch in that retro how becomes really attractive um, and also on the palate you get that nice chocolatiness but but kind of herbaceous at the same time the spices I mentioned have finally come out so I'm getting a lot of cinnamon and a lot of cardamom and interestingly just a very slight hint of cumin like you would you know use in, in Tex-Mex cuisine very interesting so far um, I don't remember the cumin being on these in, in, in past smokes but um, this series has been wonderful for me because it's forcing me to sit and identify the various flavors rather than just mindlessly smoking a cigar when I say mindlessly it's not that I don't enjoy it it's very enjoyable smoke but if somebody says what was it you enjoyed about it I might be hard-pressed to answer that question because it's obviously was a really good cigar but what was it in that cigar that I really enjoyed so this is forcing me to address those issues so I've gotten through that first third as you can see the ash is hanging on really really well as I said this structurally this is a fantastic cigar um, so I'm kind of a, uh, uh, a collective smoker I, I will go to a store and buy a handful of you know mix and match cigars rather than a box of something because I like a lot of variety it's like every time I smoke a cigar I, I want something a little different than the last two or three that I smoked and that's just always been my way um, however if I were to buy a box of something this would be a perfect cigar for me as I mentioned this has a uh, preferable ring gauge of only 46 I kind of like a little narrower cigar but more importantly the flavor of this cigar I, I guess that's a bad way of putting it not so much the actual flavors not that there's anything wrong with great flavors coming out of this but I'm I've said it in most of my videos if not all that I'm a medium medium sort of guy I like something that's medium in body and medium in richness of flavor and this is absolutely perfection in, in both camps so to me this is the ideal cigar it's a perfect cigar it's narrow and it is a true medium medium at least in, in my estimation everybody's perception of what is medium or what is you know heavy body or light bodied or light flavor it's going to be different for for each person but this fits my preferences exactly I finally lost my ash but that's okay um, 
it's plenty warm, so it, it, it shouldn't hurt anything, even though it's a little bit cool out here today. I can see why it fell off, though. It was really starting, it's just starting to canoe. That's really the first maintenance problem I've had with this since since light up. And then, I, like I said, at the light up, I, I lit it a little bit crooked because of the wind, so that was that one was on me. So, and I don't even see anything that made that apparent as to why that happened. Um, but it was a little crooked and it, and it fell off. That's fine. Um, so differences since the, the, the last update I gave you, it's been a very consistent smoke in every way. Not smoky, it's, it's all like machined woods. The uh, cocoa nibs are no longer cocoa nibs, you know, the, the, the husk that, that goes around the, the, the cocoa beans. It, it's no longer a cocoa nib flavor, it's now a nice dark chocolate uh, like cocoa powder from the actual cocoa beans themselves. So the, the chocolatiness is becoming more intense, which it should, because we're starting to concentrate the flavors as we get down there. Um, the only other thing that has that is, uh, cropped up since the last time I, I spoke about it is this beautiful both flavor and aroma of like uh, roasted portobello mushroom caps with a, with a nice savory seasoning to them. And that's actually starting to... The, the savoriness, in other words, like an herbal uh, seasoning rather than a spicy seasoning. So the cinnamon and the, and the cardamom are, are kind of fading and it's being replaced with, with herbs rather than that. Some, some savory, um, uh, maybe just a very slight hint of basil in there. Very interesting. So I'm getting down into that final third. Um, it is not surprisingly starting to smoke a little hot. Um, a lot of it's going to do, be due to the simple fact that, it, that a narrower ring gauge is going to do that. It's, it's you know, it, it's got a very, very little area to, to hold that, that kind of heat. Um, so it is starting to bring on some of like the, the peppery cedar and the, the dirty leather and it's starting to mute some of those more attractive flavors. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I suspected that once it got well into the cigar that the retrohale would uh, mellow out quite a bit more. And it really has. The, the, the retrohale now is mellow and it's taken on those uh, savory notes of the the uh, mushroom caps with the with the uh, the herbs. Everything else in it's been very very consistent. Um, this would be good with something a little on the zestier side. Um, it would go good with uh, uh, citrus juices, um, yeah, grapefruit juice, orange juice, um, and, or it's something with a little more zestiness to it in the way of a cocktail. So like a, a gin and tonic, a vodka and tonic, uh, maybe a screwdriver. Um, could go good with with just a nice uh, cafe americano, just a nice rich coffee. And it had to be pretty rich because this has a very rich flavor um, down this far. Uh, early on, it would be a perfect blend. When you get down here, you're going to have to have a pretty good strong cup of coffee, but with some cream in it to kind of mellow it out a little bit. Um, other than that, this is this is an absolutely spectacular smoke. This is the. H. Upman uh, uh, Herman's Batch. If you are a fan of the H. Upman Banker, the Banker is as it's called, which is by far, I, I believe, anyway, their their most popular cigar. And you've never tried this, I highly recommend you find one of these because these are just amazing. So if you like the content of this video, I'd appreciate a like. Uh, subscribe would be even better. And feel free to leave some comments. That really helps the channel. Um, with that, it uh, looks like I'm finally losing sun, which occurs very early this time of year, at least where I'm at. Uh, so I better cut it here. If anything else uh, appears in this during that final third, I'll be sure to put some, some notes in the uh, comments. And with that, I thank you for joining me. Have a nice day.